doing our Teacher Voices series uh, here on our YouTube channel. And today we have the opportunity to talk to Eileen Mooring. Eileen, thanks for taking your time to be with us today. Now, you're a teacher at Hickory High School, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, right. So what do you teach? I teach AP government. Um, this semester, just AP government. I teach history courses as well. But this year, this semester, I have all AP government. Okay, so how are you managing, I mean, with your family or at home uh, at this crazy time? Well, I tell you, be, before spring break, it was kind of crazy. We, I contacted all the parents to make sure the kids had internet access. Um, and I started teaching pretty much right away because the kids have to take the AP test on May 11th. And I didn't want them to suffer the consequences. So um, I started getting on with Google Meet and I was meeting my kids a couple times a day just because some kids couldn't make it at the times that I'd set up. So I was doing not, uh, nine o'clock, two o'clock, five o'clock. Um, and, you know, first started getting all this information about Zoom and all these other programs. And I talked to the kids and they said, let's just stay with what we've been doing because we don't want to switch. And I was like, thank you for that because I felt like my head was spinning with all the technology that was being thrown our way. I just wanted to stay with what I knew and let's go from there. Yeah. So, so specifically, uh, what kinds of, of things are you having uh, your students uh, do? Uh, what kind well, of I'm pretty much conducting my class the way I normally would. Um, I have my PowerPoints that I present to them. I discuss them. We have a lot of discussions. So my kids answer questions um, as we go along, make comments. Um, I do have assessments that I do on um, the writing assignments I do through Google Classroom so that I can make sure that they're on the right track with their FRQs, which are required on the AP test. And then I'm still doing reading checks and um, tests, but not for grades. I put them on Synergy, but I don't connect them to the grade book. That way the kids, they know that they've gotten the concepts. I can see where I need to modify something or go back over something. The reading checks, I told them, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna count them towards your grade towards the end that pass fail, because I wanna encourage them to continue reading. It's, it's very important in the AP curriculum. Right, yeah. So what are some of the particular challenges for you, both that uh, in teaching this way, and what are some of the positives that you've seen come out of it? That one of the big challenges, first of all, not being with the kids day to day, um, the classroom atmosphere to me adds so much to a lesson because the discussions that go, go on, you know, just making that connection with kids, it's different when you're just online, you know. Um, but certainly the other thing is having to redo all of the activities. Um, in the AP class that I teach, we try to do a lot of hands-on collaboration and things like that, that we can't do on, in this platform because not everybody's available at the same time. So it's, it's put a lot of pressure on me to come up with new ways and I know that, you know, for the last couple of weeks, I'm up usually till midnight every night rewriting and, you know, making new assessments on Synergy and things like that. So that's been the biggest challenge. The biggest reward for me is that out of 66 current students that I have this semester, um, 56 to 60 of them get on with me all the time. So I feel encouraged and I, and I try to send out messages to them of encouragement, telling them, hey guys, I know this is you know tough on you. This is your senior year, but you guys are champions. Look at what you're doing. You're still pushing forward. You're getting everything done. And um, I also hold um, exam review meetings. I have a separate classroom for exam review and I've had students come into that from first semester as well. So. That, that just melts my heart that these kids are still so willing to work, even though they've been, they this, dealt this terrible hand um, for their senior year. Senior year, yeah, no doubt. Um, what, uh, uh, your students, having AP students are probably fairly motivated. Are you finding that uh, you're making, you're having to make a lot of parent contact or are you making a lot of parent contact? For a few students, I've had to. Probably some of the students that maybe shouldn't have signed up for the AP course because they weren't willing to work. And those generally were the ones that were working before we left. Um, so I've had to make parent contacts. And, you know, I initially called all of my parents and said, hey, 
do you have the accessibility? When I see a, a student not being involved, I email mom and dad right away and say, hey, I'm just noticing that they're missing some things. This is important. It's part of the instruction. Um, certainly, I've had some students that have issues. You have to take that on a one-by-one -one basis. I had a student who was out for quite a, a while um, for fifth and sixth quarter. Um, has a lot of makeup work and rather than have them make up the test, the full test, I pulled out 10 questions out of each of those tests to let them assess on that. Um, otherwise, it becomes overwhelming to that student to have so much at this point to get done. So I think we have to be cognizant of that everybody's in a different situation. Um, and we have to understand those situations, um, you know, to, to have a deeper understanding that hey you know just because my life's going okay right now doesn't mean somebody else's is right right so what uh what advice would you give uh high school age uh parents of high school age kids uh at this well time? the first thing i think you are the best person to keep your child focused and motivated i think encouraging them um listening to them understanding what they're going through this is a tough time for seniors especially because of all of the milestones that they're missing out on so you know just keep an open mind listen to them encourage them um you know also be a little bit um with the teachers just be a little bit patient sometimes because we're trying to figure this all out at the same time and i know myself that first week you know, I think a lot of teachers these last two weeks have been in the situation I was before spring break trying to figure it all out. And I just felt like my head was spinning. So just be mindful that the teachers are doing what they can, that your, your children are at the heart of what they do, and that that's their main focus right now is making sure, you know, of course your family, but making sure that those students get what they need and stay motivated to keep moving forward. Right. And what about, uh, I talked to a teacher, I mentioned this a couple other interviews from Deep Creek that said, so her advice to students would be uh, to be patient with your parents. You know, they're not used to teaching. <laughs> uh, what, right. what advice would you have for, for students in that regard? I think that's also um, true. And I think that to, to the most of my students, of course, they're highly motivated for the most part. Um, they're pretty good about keeping up with everything. I know that some of my teacher friends that teach um, the academic classes, um, they don't have the, the, you know, feedback sometimes from the students. So that's, that's a difficult situation. It's, it's a whole different, you know, ball of wax for those um, students. But I think in that case, keep contacting parents, keep contacting students through email, um, you know, and saying, hey, you know, I'm thinking about you. Make sure you send out those birthday wishes when you see it pop up on Synergy that, hey, I'm having a birthday or, you know, I, I constantly talk to my kids, too, about college. And, you know, I know you got into, you know, William and Mary. Wow, way, way to go. And just keeping that connection open with them. But certainly, um, you know, kids need to understand parents are stressed right now. They're stressed about income, their jobs, and those kinds of things. And so kids need to be a little bit patient with their parents as well. Yeah. Very good. Well, Eileen, I really appreciate your time today. It sounds like you've got a lot of balls in the air uh, <laughs> with, your, with your students, but uh, I can assure you that your students and, and their parents and, and all of us really are appreciative of, of Well, I appreciate that. All right. Well, look, you take care. Hopefully I'll be able to talk to you soon. All right. Take care. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.